Over the past few years, good audio has been getting cheap, and cheap audio has been getting good. I had a lot of praise for the JDS Labs Atom, but will the Element 2 hold up? Let's find out. So at $399, this thing has a lot of competition, but this isn't just an amp, this is a DAC and an amp, which there's a few other good combo units on the market, but if you may recall a few years ago, everyone was buying up NFB11s and R2R 11s, myself included. And because of that, I feel like this sits in a pretty good price point for a lot of enthusiasts. And a lot of people liked amps like the THX AAA 789, but that doesn't include a DAC for its price. So let's talk about this. Build-wise, this thing is in an all-aluminum chassis with a potentiometer on top, which I quite like. It's the same design on the outside as the L-Amp. On the back, we have our power, which is also if you hold a switch between the headphone amp out and a preamp out for speakers. We have the high-low gain switch, RCA in, RCA out, and a USB plug for the internal DAC. And on the front, all we have is our quarter-inch headphone jack. And that's it. So this takes up a pretty small footprint on a desk, especially when cables are tucked away. This is pretty much all you see. I really like the minimal look and the light ring that comes on when the amp turns on. It's a lot better than the blue death lights that are in a lot of amps these days. So I'm gonna bust out my phone real quick because I can't remember all the numbers for crap. Okay, I'm gonna have to read this off my phone so I don't mess it up, but the amplifier at 600 ohms puts out continuously. This is RMS, not peak power. 165 milliwatts at 600 ohms, 656 milliwatts at 150 ohms, and 1.3 watts at 32 ohms. Now, like I said, that is continuous power, not peak power. Peak power is probably a lot higher. Now, they told me that this has an improved architecture and more power and a lower noise floor than the original L-Amp and the Atom. In fact, the Atom was derived from experiments in making this amp according to JDS Labs blog posts and measurements, which if you wanna check that out, I will have their blog posts and measurements linked in the video description. Now measurements are cool and JDS Labs seems to be all about measurements, but what I care about is how this thing performs. I tested it on an insane number of headphones from affordable all the way up to $5,000 planar cans. And it has delivered across the board. You may remember a long time ago, I did a video on the Dynalo, which you can check out here if you want. Um, it does something magic to the highs that I really, really like. It's extremely resolving. And somehow the Element 2 does the same thing. Now treble isn't recessed at all in any way. In fact, it sounds perfectly flat. And even when measuring frequency responsive headphones side by side between this and the L-Amp, I don't get any deviation in frequency response, but the highs sound a lot more smooth on the Element 2. Couldn't tell you why, they just are. Now, as far as hard to drive headphones like the 600 ohm DT880 and the Diana V2 that I have here, this did just fine. With Diana V2, I could get to more than uncomfortable listening levels at just about half volume on a high gain, and the DT880 a little bit past that if I really wanted to crank it up. So it definitely delivered on power. There were some things like these, the K371, where I really had to make sure not to turn it up much. Um, this was about all I could get out of the K371 on low gain because they're a very efficient headphone. Oh, and speaking of these, I have a review coming out on the K371 pretty soon, so make sure you stick around and subscribe because you don't want to miss it. Now that being said, with extremely sensitive headphones, no matter how low I got the volume, I didn't notice any channel imbalance until the very last edge where I could barely hear any sound. But with a headphone this efficient and me only being able to hear the imbalance at that low of a volume, it would be inaudible on basically anything else, especially a 250 ohm or higher headphone, or basically any planar. So where does this thing sit? Before I gave the Atom and the L-Amp a stellar recommendation. The Element 2 is no different. The Element 2 is currently my daily driver. I use it to power my headphones, and when I press this button on the back and hold it, I swap over and I'm controlling the volume of my speakers. It's extremely simple, it makes my desk look clean, and everything I put on it sounds absolutely phenomenal. It doesn't have quite as much power as something like the THX AAA 789, but I've never really needed that much power for anything I've had here, even the extremely hard to drive headphones because I don't listen at an insanely high volume, and this is still reached far beyond any volume level that I'm comfortable listening at. So as far as I can tell, I don't think that there's a better value on the market as far as an amp DAC combo is concerned than the JDS Labs Element 2. 
So guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please leave a like down below and a comment. Let me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get notifications for videos like this, you can turn on the little bell icon down below. And don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Until the next one, guys. Peace.